Tubies and my TikTokers and my Twitters. This is my new laptop that I purchased, and I'm going to make see how the videos come out on this. So let me see. This is a this is my Samsung Galaxy Book Two Three Hundred and Sixty, and I like it so far. I like what I'm seeing. Yes, let's take off the glasses and give you a full view of Sheila True Love. My darlings, we are in my kitchen right now. <laughs> and what I'm going to do with you right now is I'm going to, because the light on here is not too bad, you know, um, like with my phone, you know, I have glaucoma, so I have to put on the shade sometimes because it um, messes with my eyes, the, the, the light. It bothers my eyes sometimes. And right now, what I want to talk about is Jesus Christ learned obedience from the things he suffered. Now, and I'm thinking in terms of parents, how we want to protect our children, and we want to try to uh, protect them from all of the hardships of the world. And when our children grow up and uh, grow apart from us, you know, they have to go out there and experience their life journey so that they can get the experience that they need to help them to mature and to learn obedience. Here at Hebrews chapter five, verse eight through 10, it says that even though Jesus was the son of God, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. We learned that Jesus was fully divine, yet fully human, and that he was without sin Yet he experienced temptation and human weaknesses. Because of Jesus' unique nature and experience, he can fully relate to our struggles as he performs the duties required by the law for the forgiveness of our sins. Now, when we focus on Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8, he experienced the limits of space and time and life the same way that we do. God could have created a fully grown adult body, you know, for Jesus, the same way he did Adam. When he created Adam, Adam didn't have to come from a baby. God created Adam as a full grown man. He could have did that with Jesus. He could have rushed Jesus to the cross, but he didn't do that. Instead, Jesus, he left heaven and he entered our time and he experienced for himself ordinary human life from birth to adulthood to death. Learning and suffering and death are a part of life experience for all humans, all people. And God ensured that his own son would be no exception. Jesus did not need to learn anything, especially obedience. Yet at his incarnation, that means when he transformed into a flesh and into a human, at his incarnation, Jesus limited himself to the human experience. He chose the weak position of having to learn and grow. Check that out at uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Jesus learned obedience, not in the sense that he was prone to disobedience and had to bring rebelliousness under control, but in the sense that he fully entered the human experience. As a child, Jesus Christ, he obeyed his parents. He didn't give them a hard way to go. You know, really. At Luke chapter two, verse 51, you can read about that. As an adult, he obeyed the law. He didn't give them a hard way to go. And he fulfilled all righteousness. All of his life, Jesus completely fulfilled whatever his father, Jehovah, wanted him to do. He knew that obedience was prior to his incarnation. He became human flesh and became a human. That's incarnation, of course. But he learned obedience on earth by experiencing it. In every situation, no matter how difficult, the son was always obedient to his father. Jesus learned obedience from the things he suffered. As the divine son of God, that's why I know that Trinity is not the same Jesus was created because it's constantly saying the son of God. Jesus did not have to suffer, but as the son of man, 
when he came down here and he was the son of man, suffering was required for him to learn obedience. The Greek word used in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 for suffering usually refers to enduring unpleasant experiences like disease or persecution. And you can look that up at Mark chapter 5 verse 26, Acts chapter 8 verse 1. But it often also implies enduring a challenging process that transforms the sufferer. That is the sense in which the word is used when you look at Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Jesus chose to endure an unpleasant, challenging process because it was the will of his father for his relief, I mean for the brief time that Jesus was here on earth. After that process, Jesus had been made perfect. So you see, he wasn't perfect in the absolute sense. He still had the choice whether he wanted to obey or disobey. But after the process that he, he went through, now he was made completely perfect. It is crucial to note that perfect means complete as in finishing a full course of training or education. In Jesus' case, he finished an altogether righteous human life and he had a complete understanding of human weaknesses. He understood fully loneliness, human suffering, temptation. It was Jesus' total obedience as a human coming through extreme suffering that qualifies him to be our eternal high priest. Now he's crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. Hebrews chapter two, verse nine. So my point is, we're not better than Jesus Christ. And as human beings, we have to go through experiences. Sometimes we have to go through hardship in order to learn. Like I think about with my children, you know, I wanted to, you want to protect them. You keep telling them not to go that way. This person is no good for you. That's not the, the, the good, that's not the proper uh, steps to take in life. We as parents, we know what's going on because we've experienced it. And as much as we want to protect our children, like the Bible says, they have their journey that they need to go on so that they can pick up the tools in life that they're going to need to protect themselves and to grow stronger and to understand the gains and the cons and, and, the, and the, uh, the, the way humans can be so inhumane. They have to go through all of that in order for them to learn obedience. None of us are better than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Upon that note, I'm going to end it right now, my loves. I love you. This is Sheila True Love, signing off. Bye! <laughs>